What's going on guys, Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Recently I have Genius Audio send me a couple of amplifiers. I have my address out there publicly through YouTube. If you're a manufacturer and you'd like to send me some stuff to check out, you can look at that link. There is no guarantee a video will be created or that you will like the video because I don't let you see it, but I'm just true to the people. So let's see what Genius Audio sent. They actually sent me two amplifiers. They sent me a little one and a big one, but today we're going to check out the GXP450.2D and in a separate video we will check out the larger amp, but here is the little one. Let's take a closer look. Roll that beautiful bean footage. We can't let all the cell phone reviewers have all the fun tearing off the plastic. So let's take a closer look at the amplifier. As you can see here, it looks like an amplifier, kind of black with some silver, but it does look a lot like NVX. They have an amplifier. This is a monoblock version, but it looks very similar. So that tells me that Genius probably did not build this one. They probably bought it. We do not like this 2400 watt max. This on the amplifier as well, but let's check out the inputs. We have right and left RCA Tiffany style, high pass filter, crossover for high pass flat or low pass. There's adjustment for the low pass filter, selectable bass boost. Now this gives you either zero, nine or 18 dB. The gain control, which is via potentiometer and a blue power LED. On the opposite end, we have speaker terminal output. So those except eight gauge. We have three 40 amp fuses, and then we have connections for the power, remote, and ground. Those are via four gauge for the power and ground. Remote will accept an eight gauge, because you know we all need eight gauge for turn on. At the time of the video, the price is $355 on Genius website, as well as on Amazon. Check the link in the video description for more details. As far as dimensions, 10.5 inches by 6.75 inches. And as far as the height, it's about 2 inches or 51 millimeters. The ratings of the amplifier on the box, you can see 2400 watts max, 450 by 2 at 4 ohms, 12.6 volts RMS, 600 by 2 at 2 ohms, or 1200 by 1 bridged, again at 12.6 volts. Now let's fire up the good old amp dyno. We can test that and find out what it really does. But before we do that... Smash me a thumbs up. Check out the link in the video description for some Wilson Audio merch so you can be a cool big dummy just like me. Here's the amp wired up on the bench. We have both of the channels going into the dyno. We're going to turn on the amp so you can see the little light. It goes from red to blue. Very interesting, I know. Let's get on to the good stuff here. Four ohms in the two channel mode, rated 450 watts by two, 12.6 volts. Now our voltage is gonna be significantly higher than 12.6, but we're still gonna check out the rated power. 514 and 490, right at 14.4. So it did, it, did its rated power at 14.4. Just so you know, we did not test it at 12.6, so we're not gonna be able to validate those exact ratings, but it looks like if you feed it 14.4 volts, you are gonna get the power output. 512 and 486, uncertified up to the clipping point. Then let's check out the dynamic power at 4 ohms stereo. And it looks like 470-ish watts. Yep, 472, 463. Now check this out. I've never measured an amp with 98% efficiency, but we measure one today, my friends. Now with the amp still in the two channel mode, let's try two ohms where it's rated 600 watts by two at 12.6. Again, our voltage is gonna be a little higher than that because honestly, I thought it was rated at 14.4, but I'm a big dummy. You can see here 759 and 708, so easily did that rated power up to the certified test, which is 1% total harmonic distortion. Let's try it up to clipping and see what we get. Again, voltage is a little higher here. 758, 732. So nice power, well over 1400 watts total, almost 1500 actually. Let's try dynamic. Again, these are all 40 Hertz tests as well. I'm not sure I mentioned that before, but we got right at 800 watts a channel dynamically in the two ohms, 14.4. So that's excellent power. 
Let's check the efficiency. Not quite as good as we got before. 78%. That's more what we're likely to see with a Class D amp. Now, 4 ohms bridge. The amplifier can be bridged down, and that is the benefit of using a two-channel amp. It's actually a little bit more useful. You can see the left positive and right negative will bridge it down to a single channel. Now, they only recommend 4 ohm load, so we'll show that here. It's rated 1200 watts by one at 12.6. We got 1383 at 14.47. So, let's reset the dyno here, try it up to clipping. See if we can get a little bit more power as we normally do with the uncertified tests. And we did here as well, close to 1500 watts, 1475 at 14.36 at 14 volts. So no slouch here with the power output. Dynamically, it did well as well. 1,566 watts, 14.45. Oop, it gave me a little bit more, 1,567. Gotta stay on top of that, Big D. As far as efficiency goes, 75%. That's again, about what we expect with a Class D amp. All right, so there you have it overall, the test of the Genius Audio GXP 450.2, you're welcome to pause this if you want to see, but it did us ratings at all different loads. Of course, we did test it with a higher voltage, so you have to take that into consideration as well. Now, let's take the six screws off the bottom, slide the bottom plate off, and take a look at the guts. Here it is. The one thing that I found really interesting is the way the different size capacitors were together. Usually, they bundle the same type and size capacitors right against each other. 25 volt, 1000 microfarad here for the input filtering. The rail caps are 1000 microfarad, 80 volt. They're all 105 degrees Celsius caps and you can see it has Genius Audio on the board. Now let's talk about the good stuff. It met its rated power, has Tiffany style RCAs. The efficiency at four ohms is unbelievable. Never measured an amp quite that high efficiency. Has a compact size. So it fits virtually anywhere. It is two channel, so it gives you the ability to run two channel or mono. So that's actually very flexible with amplifier. Things that could be better, blah looks. It looks like just like the MBX amp. No remote bass knob, 2400 watt max. Can we get rid of that? Bass boost is selectable, not variable. There's no infrasonic filter. And the price, wow, 360 bucks seems kind of high for this in my opinion but that's just my opinion. Now looking at the Genius Audio catalog, they have a subwoofer box with a subwoofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. Gotta love that, old school style. Looks like these are probably South American style speakers. Check out the other amp they sent me and the difference in size though, just hugely massive. So make sure you stick around for the next video where I'll actually test that one, we'll see how it performs. Again, thanks to Genius for sending this out. Again, you guys know me. I'm going to tell you what I think. So <laughs> there is no preferential treatment if you send me stuff, but I will show your products and tell you what I think. So if you're up for that, send it to me and we'll see how it does. This is Big D. Thanks as always for watching. Until the next video, I'm out of here. Genius Audio 450.2. We'll try two ohms bridge mono. It's not rated at this load, uh, but we're going to try it anyway. Might pop a fuse, might blow up the amp. Who knows, but we're gonna try it anyway, just for you guys. 40 Hertz, two ohms bridge mono. All right, 1778 at 14.36. Uh, we're gonna try dynamic burst at two ohms mono. See what it does, 40 Hertz. Twenty-seven ninety-seven, fourteen and a half volts.